Welcome back to Al's Kitchen. Well, it's the season of goodwill and all things nice and spicy. Well, that's why I say my house. This week, I'm gonna be doing a curry that the staff eat in curry Indian restaurants, which is why it's called a staff curry. Why do they eat it? Well, they're not brought up on BIR curry, you know, the ones with base gravy. They like Desi style, which means home style. So they want like the curries that they're used to eating growing up that their mums and dads made. And these are made the authentic way with onions, garlic, ginger, all the fresh spices and chilies, and to with a uh, chicken on the bone for that extra added flavour. We're going to be cooking a staff curry, there's a lot in this recipe, so much so in fact I'm going to have to read the spices off of a list that I've written out because there's just so many spices in this curry. Well over to the spices, let's go. So in this bowl here I have got um, two teaspoons of cumin, half a teaspoon of fennel seeds, half a teaspoon of black peppercorns, five cardamom pods, one teaspoon of mustard seeds, also got a small piece of cinnamon. Well, as far as the other spices go, two teaspoons of turmeric powder. This is gonna give the curry a lovely color. I have got um, one tablespoon of tandoori masala powder, two tablespoons of garam masala here. I've got two teaspoons of extra hot chili powder. That's to complement the fresh chilies. The fresh chilies, I've got six green fresh chilies. Um, so that's gonna be on the hot side, uh, not quite vindaloo heat. So if you wanna take that down, just either add the chilies or the extra hot chili powder, but maybe not both. I've got two tins of fresh tomatoes, chopped tinned tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes if you want, uh, but I wanna use the tinned for convenience. There's 800 grams here. And I've got garlic and ginger paste. This was blended, um, I used about three cloves of garlic and an equal amount of fresh ginger in that blend. Or you can use those frozen types, you know, the ones we've used in the past. Let me check that I've got all the ingredients out. It doesn't matter even if I haven't got all the ingredients uh, that I've just sent them to you because I'm going to be writing them all down anyway and putting them in the description box below. Talking about description box below, have you bought your aprons? Now again, the latest batch of aprons have been held up at customs. Can you believe it? Now they sent me a letter saying, what are the goods that you ordered? Well, I said, they're aprons. Past three times, you've been opening the boxes anyway and checking them. So why are you asking me what I've ordered? But they've been held at customs. So if you order them, you may not get them in time for Christmas. I'm so sorry. But I will do my best to send them out as soon as they arrive and uh, you'll get them just after Christmas. A good New Year's treat. Anyway, so let's crack on with this curry. I've got 200 ml of vegetable oil here. Right, so in goes the oil. You can just buy these on the internet. I've got uh, this on Amazon, I think. Cheers, everyone. I'm still drinking Stella on the keg. Look at these lovely glasses I got in the Heineken exhibition in Amsterdam. Are they lovely? They're not pints or half pints. These are 0.25L. That's like a quarter pint, that. Isn't that amazing? And they've even got little tiny ones than that. And these are the ones I give to my mates when they come over because they take the piss. Going to be throwing in a couple of tablespoons of butter gear as well because you know, these um, guys in the restaurants, they like their curries nice and rich. Right, so throw in the onions. We're gonna sweat these out, we're not gonna overcook them. And you know, the great thing about these authentic curries, you know, they're much easier than BIR, why? Because you don't have to make the base gravy beforehand and there's not much technique involved. You're literally just putting everything in this pot and cooking it all down. And an hour later, you've got your curry. And that's the beauty of it, you see. Yeah, so I had a lovely trip in Amsterdam I was there for five days, but they went into lockdown on day two. Well, actually, they was in lockdown already when I got there, but everything closed at eight o'clock in the evening, which wasn't too bad. But I think on day two, they upped the ante and they locked everything down at five o'clock, which meant I was eating my dinner at four o'clock. So what I ended up doing was just getting KFC strips the rest of the days and buying a nice healthy salad. So I had my KFC strips in one hand and I had my healthy salad in the other and that made me feel a little bit better about the KFC. That's it. And put in some ghee. See, I mean with this kind of heat in this cad eye, you can cook things really quick. So anyway, how many of you have been cooking my Lahari style street food karai? It's gone amazing, like well, well over 30,000 hits already. Now we've softened those onions down, push everything to the side slightly, and we're gonna put in our whole spices and the chilies. Once you've put those whole spices in, that's when you start getting those bursts of aromatics, releasing all their own oils into the oil and the onion. 
And that's absolutely beautiful, that is. You want to cook those out for about 30 seconds, turning those onions so they soften nice and evenly. And it's nice to have a big pot like this so you've got the nice space to really be turning everything so you're not making a mess. Right now, after a sup, we're going to put in the ginger and garlic paste. I tend to put this in just after because I think if this goes in first, because I'll get the oil nice and hot, it tends to burn quick. So I'll just soften that out in amongst the onions. All right, now we're going to go in with all our powdered spices. All right, look at the gold colour we're going to produce with the turmeric. This is like science in the laboratory. Turn that in. Wow, look at that. Nice and gold. So that's one layer. Let's start building the layers. Okay, so now we've made all the onions nice and gold. We're going to add a little bit of red. Let's put in the chilli powder and the tandoori masala powder. Just shop bought tandoori masala powder. Right, this is where things start getting intense. This looks beautiful ready. Okay, won't leave it too long. Let's go in with the curry powder or the mixed powder and the garam masala. Right, I know I'm going to get messages saying, oh, two tablespoons of garam masala. Yeah, two tablespoons of garam masala. The proof's in the pudding, judge the curry at the end. That's it, turn all that in, fry out all those lovely spices. And remember, if you don't use the right amount of oil, you won't have all this juice to cook the spices in. You're gonna end up with a burnt mess on the bottom of the pan. Now we're gonna add the two tins of tomatoes. There you go, and we're gonna cook this out. We're gonna cook this down for around eight to 10 minutes. I'll get back to you in eight to 10 minutes. Alexa, stop. Right, so this is eight minutes, been cooking it down. And do you know what I realised? You're not seeing the colour as I see it with my eye on the camera. So I'm going to put one of these little spotlight LED lamps on just so you can see what I see. See that? See how rich and vibrant and red that is? It's amazing, isn't it? This is the curry that you could be cooking at home and all in an hour. Handy these lights. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in half a teaspoon of salt. Probably need a teaspoon nearer the end, but you can add, but you can't take away. So just be careful. So this masala has been cooking down for eight minutes. And we're gonna melt those onions even further. But after we've added the chicken. So I'm using a kilo of bone in skinless thighs. You can use um, drumsticks. You can use a whole chicken cut up. Um, if you're inclined to cut a chicken up, do that. Um, obviously, things are so easier in the supermarkets now. Just going to cover these chicken pieces in the masala sauce. And this is stage one complete. I mean, oh God, you know, I, mean, I say this all the time. This looks sensational. Absolutely sensational. We're going to cook this out for 30 to 40 minutes um, on a low to medium heat lid on and uh, we'll finish up in the next stage and I'll catch you then. Can we go and see whether the curry's done? It's a staff curry. You know, you know the curries that the staff eat in the restaurants, they don't like none of our BIR naff, do they? You can have a bit of BIR curry or do you want a bit of staff curry, Simba? Eh? Staff or BIR? You're going to come on telly with me? A bit, of, a bit of chicken, but you can't have the onion gravy because you can't eat onions. Let's go and get this curry sorted. Alexa, stop. Right, so this has been cooking for 30 minutes. I've literally only popped in at the 15 minute stage, just to give it a turn to make sure it's not catching on the bottom. Let's see what goodies we've got under here. Wow, look at that. Let's get the light on it. Absolutely superb. The oil is separated and risen to the top. And I'm gonna have a little cheeky taste, to be honest. Mmm. Oh, that is lovely and flavoursome. It does need the extra half teaspoon of salt. Wow. 
That is something to behold, I tell you. I mean, how long has this taken? It's taken just under an hour. Throw in some lovely fresh coriander. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I mean, cooking is therapeutic. I mean, if you suffer with depression, get into cooking. It's what I did years ago. And just the preparation, just prepping all the stuff, takes your mind off your world's worries. You can just get lost in what you're doing. And then you get your dopamine release once you finish the cook, because you produce something, you've earned the reward. You've earned the dopamine fix. You've earned it. No one's given you anything. You've produced something. And let me help you with that. Especially through the winter. This is why I go away a lot. Break up the winter. Right, so I'm going to plate this up. And I absolutely can't wait. Get a bowl of your choice and make this look beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful chicken thighs on the bone. I give around two thighs per person and the rest is just like gravy. Get that nice and stable. And dress this with a nice bit of coriander. Right, so now it's time for the taste test. Let's go with a little bit of chicken here. We just fell off the bone there, look at that. That is beautiful, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, let's have a go. Mmm, mmm, that is absolutely divine, that's heavenly. Well, it's one of these curries you're going to keep coming back to. No wonder the staff eat the staff curry. If you could order this on the menu, you would. This is absolutely amazing. Let's have another bit. Oh, God, oh, I'm having a baby. This is absolutely sumptuous. I and mean, if you're a curry lover, you're going to love this curry. It is absolutely amazing. It is so rich. It's got loads of layers going through there. You know what? I mean, you know what they say about spices, that they, they mature over time. I can't wait to try this tomorrow. This is actually tomorrow's dinner. and not, I'm going out for dinner tonight. I'm going to Toby Carvery. Nothing compared to this, but I've got this to look forward to tomorrow. Anyway, I want to wish you all great holidays this end of year. Thanks for supporting me and the channel this whole year. This year in Owl's Kitchen has been fantastic. I've enjoyed the viewers watching me, the comments you leave, the likes you give me. I've enjoyed it all. That's my, that's my payment. That's what you give me. Not about the money. It's about the love, the passion for the food. And I love producing these videos for you. Show your appreciation, please, by leaving a like and smashing that subscribe button. I'll be back in the new year and I'll see you again with some more curry in Al's kitchen. I'm Al and I'm out of here. Mmm, oh my god.